Camilla Georgie on the run from authorities. Whoa, this is a developing story and boy is this getting juicy. Well, now we know why Camilla Georgie never smiled when playing. She had nothing to smile about, ladies and gentlemen. But if you think this is going to be a video bashing Georgie, that's not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, we're going to take a closer look at the WTA. That's right. Camilla Georgie retired this past week with 434 wins, 325 losses. She retired abruptly. We're wondering why, especially me in particular, I felt... The last year and a half, she was starting to play her best tennis, finally parting ways from her father in terms of coach, even though he was still there at the matches coaching, which was kind of weird to me. Like, I don't know. But it seemed like her game was improving. It seemed like she was starting to play a little bit more smarter and, and just intelligent in the different situations where normally we would just see her play 100 miles per hour with no adjustments. Of the 434 wins, during her career, 117 came on clay, which probably wasn't her strongest surface as she's done horribly in terms of performance in Italy in recent years. Yes, several losing clay seasons, but 180, 180 wins overall on hard, which we could say was her strongest surface, right? 60 wins on grass. Now, she did win a championship last year in Mexico where we saw her take out Sloan Stevens, Rebecca Peterson in the championship match. But her biggest win was a Master 1000 event in Montreal, where she took out Pliskova, Jessica Pegula, Petra Kvitova, and the future of tennis, Corey Coco Golf. In 18, she won the upper lens, taking out Ekaterina Alexandrova. And in 2015, she won a grass championship, taking out Belinda Bencic and Kiki, do you love me? So she retired with four main tour championships. And I remember a time after that, her Tolzian Bosch championship, I thought she would never win another title again, to be honest with you. So it was good to see her finally win a 1,000 in Montreal. That's her biggest purse on the WTA in, in any event, winning $1 million. But it didn't go far, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to take a close look now. On this season before retiring, Camilla Georgie, three and six, having a horrible year. She made about 185000 in earnings, right? About 20000 per match if you average it out that way. Over the course of her career, 434 wins, 325 losses, right? Just under 800 matches played, $6 million. And this is what I want to talk about. Georgie played nearly 800 matches and only made $6 million. Now, tennis is a very expensive sport. I covered several stories in the past about how players, especially on the ITF, they're sharing hotel rooms. There's four to five players sharing a hotel room because the cost of playing this professional sport is so high. Most players are not profitable. If we take a look at any player, let's say most players outside of the top 10 or even top 20, they're probably not that profitable. And a lot of players suffer from depression and a lot of it is financial related. So let's take a close look here, guys. Some of the costs associated with playing tennis. We all know the tours in a different country every week. How about flights? Flights are not cheap, ladies and gentlemen, especially when you're flying internationally. They are not cheap. We saw Alicia Parks in, in the Czech Republic a couple of years ago. She took a trip there by herself and she came home with the hardware with Kat McNally. OK. Flights, hotel costs, ground transportation. There's medical expenses outside of what they provide from, you know, the free services uh, during the tournament. You may have an injury. You need to seek medical attention on your own. That's very expensive. The cost of nutrition to stay hydrated and to stay balanced and healthy. Food is very expensive, especially if you want to eat healthy. You know, these players are not exactly eating 99 cent burgers. They need full course meals so they're rehydrated and just filling properly. Now, those are some of the costs related to playing actual tennis matches. But what about their household expenses? When they're not a professional athlete, they have to maintain their own living expenses. That's expensive, right? With inflation 
going up everywhere worldwide. I mean, this administration is talking about taking the capital gains tax anywhere from 19% up to 45%. Canada has already talked about 66% capital gains tax. The world is falling apart in case you haven't noticed. And I'm upset at the WTA for not taking better care of these players. Let's talk about coaching costs. Yes, you have to pay your coach. A lot of players on the ITF can't even afford a coach. How are they going to get better if they're not strong and powerful like an Alicia Parks that can come up off of her strength and raw talent? How are they going to get better? Coaches, training, managers, all of this stuff costs money, ladies and gentlemen. Camilla Georgie played nearly 800 matches and only made $6 million. The WTA, in terms of revenue of their last tax filing, they're a 501c. They got a lot of perks, ladies and gentlemen. They made about $114 million in revenue. That's revenue. Total expenses, $110. Listen, guys. It's channels like this here, Tennis in a Minute. We're bringing tennis to households on the daily. Every week, I reach over 110,000 households, okay? It's a lot of people. Now, again, I'm not the biggest tennis network out here, and I don't want to be because I don't do it for money. My style of uploading videos does not coincide with what the algorithm wants. They want, on average, three videos a week that are long, that they can promote with the advertisers and the sponsors and kind of milk people for watching your videos. I upload 10 to 20 videos a day. They're short. I'm covering matches, and it's for the love of tennis. That doesn't work with the algorithm. OK, because they're all short videos. They can't promote them. My video, my videos don't do well until one or two months later. OK, it's all the old stuff that keeps this channel relevant. But the reality here is it's channels like this that bring tennis to the different households all throughout the world. And this is what the WTA needs to start looking at. We're growing the sport. Now, 114 million in, in, in revenue. That's small, guys. Any of the major sports organizations, they're in the billions. Look at the ATP, right? It's a much bigger organization. But nonetheless, they're making money. I do think they need to take a hard look. And this is why the tour, this is why they're resorting to places like Cancun, having to build a cheap stadium and Coco's complaining. Well, actually, all of them complain about just how cheap the court was. They literally built it in two weeks. Okay. And this is why they're resorting to going to places like Saudi Arabia, where they have to take the $15 million payday for a country that hasn't necessarily treated its women good in the past because they need the money. Now, any of the professional sports organizations make the bulk of their revenue from TV sponsorship, TV endorsements. That's where the big bucks come from. In this digital age, we have channels like mine that are bringing tennis to so many households, which is growing the sport, which is making people want to know who these players are, forcing them to tune into the matches. So we're making these sports better. But in terms of revenue, one easy way to increase revenue is lower ticket prices. These stadiums are not packed. And I joke all the time that some of these ladies couldn't sell out the local tennis club. Why? Well, in terms of the WTA, the ticket prices are too high. I've gone to so many tennis events. And listen, guys, you're going to spend thousands of dollars to attend a tennis event and just to witness an empty stadium because people are not forking over this type of money in this economy. They got to lower ticket prices. OK, that's one way to increase revenue because too many of these arenas are empty. Should there be some type of partnership with the ATP? Well, they're different organizations, but I think where the slams and the master events cross paths and meet each other, yeah, they're paying the ladies equal pay, but we have to tap into some of that ATP money as well where these events meet each other, all right? I wanna take a look at its assets. 114 million in assets. Now, several years ago, there were talks about giving the players pensions. I'm not sure where those talks are now, if it's something that's complete, but I want to shout out Novak, Anjibor, and all the players that are fighting for 
player rights, right? The Players Association, essentially, that's what it is. They're fighting for higher wages. We have to take some of this revenue that the WTA makes, and, and, and this is what they're claiming. They're claiming $110 million in expenses, but we, we all know how that goes. Camilla Georgie's having issues with her taxes, but we all know how that goes, right? They're claiming this amount of expenses because it's, it's a deduction. Now, I'm upset that Camilla has these problems because outside of the Williams sisters, let's be honest, guys, be honest with yourself. Let's take a look at the top stars in today's game. We all know Coco's right there because she's the most recognized face on tour. She's the, she has the best upside of all players, right? She's accomplished more than any player on tour with the exception of Venus as a teenager than anyone. She's accomplished more as a teenager than anyone on tour with the exception of Venus. We know that. She's big time. She's competing against adult grown women. Now, Coco made roughly about $23 million if we round up last year, the highest paid female athlete in the world. But she didn't even make the top 100 earners of athletes. She fell about $10 million short because these other organizations are paying their players so much. Guys, I talked about points at a 250. You make it to the semifinal in a 250, you make what? You get 78 points, but how much are you making? You might make a couple grand. They don't pay anything. This is why players like Camilla Georgie, who is by far one of the most popular players on tour, has not made any money from tennis. It's ridiculous. Now, Novak recently talked about how these sports organizations, in particular the ATP and the WTA, how they contract with these casinos and these sporting sites. We all know that sports wagering is one of the biggest things. It's one of the biggest economies right now, right? These tennis organizations get paid money on the back end to let these sports organizations do whatever they want with the players' names, their likeness, you know, offer wagers against them. Novak said some of that money needs to be split with the players, and I agree. To avoid situations like this where by far one of the most popular players on tour, Camilla Georgie, should not be in a financial situation like this. And I know what you guys are going to say. Okay, well, what is she doing with her money? Is she managing her money? Does she have endorsements off the court? I don't know what she has for endorsements. I mean, I know she got in trouble a couple of years ago where she tried to put a little sticker, a little patch on her outfit at Wimbledon and, and they weren't having it. So now they do let players do that. But she clearly tried to do it to, to make a little bit of money that she wasn't making from actually playing the match. Camilla Georgie's too popular for this to happen. OK, you know, you take a look at the top 10, um, the top 10 uh, college basketball players. Right. There's one girl on the list. I was looking at the list recently. There's one girl on the list who I'm not going to say her name, but she, she's not good at all. It's just she's very popular on social media and everyone knows her because she poses all these, you know, sexy pictures and stuff. But she she can't play a lick of basketball. But she makes a lot of revenue from that. But she's not actually good with the sport. I think tennis needs to consider popular players, even though if they're struggling on tour and not winning matches, if they're popular and they're drawing eyes to the sport, the WTA has got to work out some type of agreement. Like Novak is saying, compensate these players for all the money you're making off of their name. Camilla Georgie on this channel by far, she's had months where she's been the most popular player on this channel. She is very popular, guys. I don't care what her record is. She is a big time tennis star. People want to see her play. I love covering her matches. She's exciting to watch. This is unacceptable. The WTA's got to increase their pay for these players. You're 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 bringing home over 100 million dollars. You can afford to pay look at least the top 100. Make an incentive for being in the top 100 or the top 50 or something. Give them at least I don't know an extra $100,000 bonus or something. Do something for these players so they're not in these financial situations like this. And yes, the reports are, it's not just her, it's her entire family. Like, I'm not sure what's going on there. It's probably, I don't really believe a lot of the media reports and news articles that come out. A lot of times it's propaganda. I mean, take a look at Sabalenka. What a tragedy with her ex-boyfriend in Miami. 
The initial reports were untrue and it turned out to be nothing like that. So I don't know. The reports is that Camilla Georgi fled to the States and look, it's, I mean, it's not like the U S it's not going to extradite her if she's actually in legal trouble. But I mean, um, I, I don't, it's, it's, I don't know a lot about this type of situation because I'm, I'm not, of course, I'm not from Italy. I don't, I don't know how they do things there, but I would imagine if you're like really in trouble, they would hold your passport, right? Isn't that how it works? I thought that's how it works, but I don't know. Is, is she a dual resident? Does anyone know this kind of stuff? But nonetheless, we're going to wrap this video up. And I think the conclusion here is the WTA has got to pay the players more. OK, and all of the players have been complaining. All of the top 10 players have been complaining about money. They do not make enough. And Elena Rabakina, bless that sweet girl. And that's why I said protect Rabakina at all costs, because she's like the only one speaking up about these conditions. No one else is speaking up, but we're back in Anz is as well. And Anz went through a lot. OK, they really dragged her through the press. She was depressed. She's finally getting her mojo back, but bless Rebecca because that little sweet little woman is the only one speaking up right now. And it's I think it's putting her in some type of depression because she doesn't even want to play. She had time to recover from Madrid. She doesn't even want to play Rome. She's like, forget it. So, look, the WTA, pay these players more. Do what you need to do, but take care of these players because if Coco and Iga weren't lacing up to play, no one would really watch. Let's just be honest. And Coco, they talked about her making $23 million. Guys, you know how that works. She's not bringing home $23 million. She'll be lucky if she got eight. When you factor out all these fees and, and expenses for their checks, when these players get a, a game check from, from a, a tennis match, there's all types of deductions in there. There's facility fees and all types of extra taxes they're being hit with. So that 23 that Coco made, she might have took home eight. OK, and then she's got her own lifestyle. She's got to live and worry about. So here's what I would do if I were any of these top athletes and I get a sponsor like New Balance or Asics or Nike or Reebok, Fila, I would put in my contract that you need to cover all of my transportation costs, my flight, my hotel, everything, because I don't want that coming out of any of my game checks. You need to cover that if you want me to sign with your organization. So therefore, that takes away one expense. I sign another deal with a clothing company. Then you know what? I need you to cover my mortgage costs for the next 10 years. Get creative with these contracts, guys. Take it out of what they're paying you and make it work so you're not suffering on tour. You have to be, you have to adjust with the times, guys. We are living in times now where things are getting way out of hand. The leadership has failed us. And right now, I think the WTA leadership, as much as I love the organization, they have to do better by these players. Because I say it all the time. We work for people. We work for people. Without the people, we have nothing. Like the video, show some love. Hit the super thanks. We'll be back, guys.